Top 10 places to visit in the UK. England. Hi friends, I'm back with my second and possibly final reaction video. Today I'm mixing it up a bit and Ian is going to do a reaction video with me. We're going to watch a video that we've been meaning to see for a long time by a great travel vlogger YouTuber named Ryan Shirley. So let's get started. I've been to Britain 20 plus times and Ian, how would you characterize how often you've been to Britain? Probably 35 <laughs> or more times. I don't know, I've, I've lost count. Plus, you, when you were a child, you would spend the whole summer there. So it's Yeah, not like I'm you, counting those times, though. But yeah. Right, right, right. But I'm just saying, it's not like those were a week-long trip. Yeah. You've spent whole summers there. Right. So you've spent a lot of time there. You've traveled around to different places, but we've probably spent more time in certain areas than others. So I'm yeah. curious, when we go through this top 10, how many of the 10 will we each have visited? Yeah. So, yeah, that'll be interesting to see. And I, yeah. I sometimes I can't remember where I've been, so I'm like saying to you, have I been there? Yeah. <laughs> so, well, it's a lot of years we've got covered. Yeah. So. so so we're going to keep keep track on our fingers of yeah. how many of these top 10 yeah. places we've been. Yeah. That's a gorgeous <laughs> shot. <laughs> that the is. The United Kingdom is made up of the countries of England, Wales, Northern Ireland, and Scotland. If you want to go back in time and feel like you're in a fairy tale or a Harry Potter film, the UK is the place for you. Well, I would love to have Ryan's drone. Can you put that on my Christmas wish list? Because yeah. shots are great. Yeah, no, he has, he has beautiful drone photography. He's also extremely fearless, which we're not. <laughs> so he does have beautiful photography. It's easy to see why so many myths and legends were born here. It's one of the world's most enchanting places. All right, so for our first location, we're going to go visit possibly the most iconic city in the world, London. I've traveled more to London than any other international destination. I have to say it's my favorite city in the world and I just keep coming back. Everything from the double-decker buses to the energy of Piccadilly Circus makes the city feel so alive. There's just so many places to see. You can check out the iconic Big Ben and walk across the ridge to see the Palace of Westminster. There's the Tower Bridge, which is pop. Did he just say Westminster? Yeah, it sounded like he did. <laughs> sounded like he did. Hopefully this summer we will actually be able to see Big Ben. Yeah. Or the Elizabeth Tower, I should say. Right. You can see Big Ben now. It's not covered up with scaffolding anymore. But yeah. um, hopefully the Elizabeth Tower won't be either. We've been waiting a lot of years for that. Yeah. Possibly the most famous bridge in all of London. You can go see the Stoic Guards at Buckingham Palace or take a ride on the London Eye. If you haven't already been to London, I would highly recommend visiting when you can. It's hard to beat the London atmosphere. There's no city like it in the world. All right, so after exploring London, we're going to make the two hour drive over to Stonehenge. Oh, located no. in Wiltshire, <laughs> England, lies one of the most famous. Yeah. Is, is Stonehenge one of his top 10? Oh, I'm sure it is. That he said London was one, and Stonehenge is. Oh, another. we're supposed to be counting. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Been to both of those. Okay, so, dude, if Stonehenge is one of his top ten, it better get a lot better after this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, we have a difficult time talking about it because we haven't been there. I've been, I've been there. Oh, you have. Okay. I went there my first okay. time to Britain when I wasn't with you, 1985. Um, but since then, we've just seen it from the motorway. Yeah, I've seen it from the A road as you pass, as you drive past it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we won't go off uh, talking about Stonehenge, but there's go see Bella's Nap, like in my recent video. Go see Bella's Nap instead of Stonehenge. Famous man-made rock structures in the world. There's a lot of mystery surrounding Stonehenge. Like what was its purpose and how was it made? Archaeologists believe it was constructed back between 3000 to 2000 BC. Stonehenge consists of a ring of rocks, each being around 13 feet high and weighing nearly 25 tons each. It's unclear what the exact purpose of Stonehenge was. It's believed that it was used as an astronomical observatory or a religious site. Either way, it sure makes you stop and think how people thousands of years ago were able to construct this. All right, so after Stonehenge, we're gonna head on over to the Jurassic mm. Coast. Mm -hmm. While you won't find any dinosaurs here, you might find some fossils on the beach. The Jurassic mm. Coast is England's only natural- Love those white cliffs. Those are amazing drone shots. Now, I have not been to the Jurassic Coast, have yeah, you? Yeah, we've been to Lyme Regis, which is, and and parts, other parts of Dorset that were, yeah. but not quite what he's filming right here. Like the needles, I think, is what he's going to show. And yeah. I, we haven't been there before. Well, I do like Lyme Regis, but 
it, it didn't look like that. That's no, that's no. amazing. Yeah. World Heritage Site it has become popular with its white cliffs and picturesque beaches that are full of fossils from over 65 million years ago. One of the most famous spots on the Jurassic yeah. Coast is Dirtle Door. Door. It's yeah. this limestone arch that goes straight into the ocean. There's a great beach there, and I just can't think of a better place to spend during the hot English summers. What am I? Wait a minute. I thought Dirtle Door was in Cornwall. No. No. Oh, no. my bad. And there's a big section or a big part of the cliffs in the Jurassic Coast area that collapsed recently. Oh my. Yeah. That sounds scary. My favorite spots on the Jurassic Coast is Old Harry's Rocks. Yeah. Now, special thanks to my there. friend David Rule for providing this footage. He has an awesome Instagram and YouTube that I'll provide in the description below. I remember the first time I saw his picture wow, of this what place, a shot. I was just baffled by the scenery there. The old hairy That's rocks amazing. are these sea stacks that are made completely out of chalk that mark the end of the Jurassic Coast. In World War II, the stacks were used as target practice for pilots. Oh. So that's kind of crazy. I just love the combination of the green meadows with the white cliffs and the blue ocean. I mean, it's just hard to beat that scenery. All right, so after the Jurassic Coast, we're head up north to visit the country of Wells. Now Wells is located in the southwest. Wait a minute. In the top 10 places to visit in the UK, Wales. The entire, <laughs> entire country of Wales is one of them? It's kind of like London. No, 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 just no. You, 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 can't, you can't say Stonehenge, which is like this one tiny little specific place, and then the entire country of Wales. Well, by the way, the stones that are from Stonehenge come from Wales. That would have been an interesting okay, thing to point out. Okay, fun fact, but okay. Uh, okay, I'm going to shut up. I'm hoping this gets better. This part of Great Britain, it's famous for its mountainous national parks, picturesque coastline, and distinct Welsh language. One of the most scenic places in Wales is the Snowdonia National Park. It's a region yeah. in northwest Wales that is known for its mountains and lakes. The highest peak in Wales, Mount Snowdon, is located in the park with an elevation of 10,085 meters. You can hike on up there, or you can take the Snowdon Mountain Railway to the top. Meters. If you're lucky, you might be able to see Ireland across the sea. All right, so after Wells, we're going to head to the Isle of Man. Now, located in the yeah. Irish Sea, right between England and Ireland, lies a rugged island known for its rural landscapes and medieval castles. While it's technically not part of the United Kingdom, it has status of crown dependency, and the UK is responsible for its defense and external relations. The Isle of Man has had an interesting history. Yeah, so I have been to the Isle of Man, but it was when I was eight years old, so <laughs> a very, very long time ago took a ferry from North Wales to the Isle of Man. Well, I think we need to go back. Yeah. With a drone. Yeah. 6500 BC and in the 19th century it was ruled by Norway but in 1266 the island became part of Scotland and now it is a self-governing isle. An interesting place on the Isle of Man is Peel Castle. It was constructed by Vikings in the 11th century and just sits right on the ocean. I mean, it's a pretty cool castle if you ask me. All right so after the Isle of Man we're going to head really across cool. the sea to visit Northern Ireland. Oh, yeah, now Ireland from... is full of just beautiful- oh, Again, yeah. but... again. This is another like whole country kind of place. Well, but he's going to give us specific suggestions. If this is your first time watching my channel, welcome. I post videos every Friday about all kinds of British things. I hope you subscribe and stick around. Whether you live in Britain or you just love Britain, I hope you join the conversation. So cliffs and countless castles. Back in 1921, Ireland was split into Northern and Southern Ireland as a result of the Government of Ireland Act of 1920. While Southern Ireland became a free Irish state, Northern Ireland remained within the United Kingdom. The capital of Northern Ireland is the city of Belfast, which is the birthplace of the Titanic ship. One of the most iconic places in Northern Ireland is the Dark Hedges. It's this road lined with beech trees planted in the 18th century. It was used as a filming location for the Game of Thrones. Yeah, On the Game Northern coast, you can check out the Carrick Already Rope Bridge or see the basalt columns at the Giant's Causeway. I mean, there's just so much history and beauty in Ireland and it just makes me want to go there and explore. All right, so for our next location, we're going to head to Scotland to visit the Isle of Isle Skye. Of Skye. This is probably yes. my all-time favorite. Dude, look at him stand. Oh, yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> we would never do that. Yeah. I mean, that's an awesome shot, but I, I have my limits on yeah. what I'm willing to do for an awesome shot. when we shot. went to the sky, I had badly twisted my ankle when we were in Belgium. And I had all these hikes planned for that mm -hmm. area, and we weren't able to do them, but we still were able to take in some of the beautiful scenery. Yeah. There. So we've been there, but we have not been there with a drone and with 
two good ankles. Yeah. <laughs> place in the UK. You'll literally feel like you're in a fairy tale when you visit there. I was lucky enough to go to the Isle of Skye last summer, and it's about a five hour drive from Edinburgh. One of the most impressive places in the Isle of Skye is the Old Man of Store. It's one of my all time favorite rock formations. I felt like I was on the set of Game of Thrones when I was there. Now to get to the Old Man of Store, it's about a four kilometer hike. You walk through some conservation caves and you'll reach the famous rock pinnacles. I went for sunrise and sunset and both occasions yeah, were Yeah, I love this filming. When I was there, there was just like crows flying around the rock and, and there was some sheep running around. <laughs> right? It was just a magical place. So the legend of the Old Man of Store is. is supposedly a giant lived there a long time ago and when he was buried, his thumb was left sticking out of the ground. <laughs> when you go there, it's easy to see why it's one of the world's most iconic rock formations. It's one of my all-time favorite places, and I recommend everyone to see it at least once in their life. Just a few minutes away from the Old Man of Store, oh, there is wow. a breathtaking waterfall called Meow Falls. We didn't see that when we were there. But we were staying in a youth hostel along the coast, the north coast of Skye, when we were there. So that was that was kind of a cool thing to do with our yeah. boys. Yeah, it was... It, we really enjoyed staying there and we did see some cool things. It did feel just like walking back in time a few million years when you're hiking there in the Isle of Skye, mm -hmm. but that would have been a cool waterfall to see mm -hmm. and drown. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice viewpoint where you can look at the waterfall, the surrounding- The water's going up. Also mm -hmm. stunning. One of the most famous is Tilt Rock which are right by Meow Falls. I mean, it's just such a cool area. There aren't many waterfalls that fall straight into the ocean. If you're looking to find some fairies, you may want to check out the fairy pools. There yeah, we did that. There's blue pools that lie at the base of the black corns. When I was there, there were so many midges. I didn't dare get close to the water. Oh, so make sure yeah. You're there. Midges are the worst. Yeah. Midges ruin a lot of lovely holidays in Scotland. Yes. <laughs> some bug spray. If you want to do a beautiful hike, I'd also recommend visiting the Korang. It's one of the most beautiful areas in the Isle of Skye. You feel like you're walking on a giant golf course. I found this crazy vantage point to get a good 360 wow. view of the whole area. <laughs> Alright, so after the Isle of Skye, we're going to head over to the nearby Eileen Donang Castle. Mm, if you're yeah. driving to the Isle of Skye, you will drive right by this. Yeah, it's one of did. my favorite castles Stop. in the UK. Situated on a small tidal island, at the point where the three great sea locks meet, the castle was built in the 13th century. I'm so mad at myself. I didn't visit the castle when I was there. I wasn't able to check it out. That's one of my biggest regrets of when I visited the UK, so don't make mm -hmm. the same mistake I made. All right, so after castle, we're gonna head over to one of Scotland's most iconic locations, the Glenfinan Vieda. It's located at the top of Loch Shill in the West Highlands of Scotland. It was complete. I would say viaduct, but <laughs> yeah. I I've never heard Glenfinnan pronounced that way either. Completed around 1898. This may look familiar because it was featured in the Harry Potter films. Now, it doesn't look familiar just because of being in the Harry Potter films. It looks familiar because it was in the Harry Potter films and every single travel vlogger and Instagrammer who's gone to that area of Scotland has, you know, waited for hours to get the perfect shot of that viaduct and train. When I was there, I wanted to get close to the bridge, so I walked underneath it. I was just shook by how big it actually was. After I hiked to the top to get a good vantage point so I could see the famous train go across the viaduct, just really reminds you of those Harry Potter movies. All right, so after Glen Finan, we're gonna head over to Edinburgh. Now, if you wanna go back in time, Edinburgh is a must. It's where J.K. Rowling wrote her Harry Potter novels. When I started traveling, this was one of the first cities I visited. It's a medieval old town with intricate neoclassical buildings cobblestone streets and beautiful gardens. The <laughs> iconic Edinburgh castle overlooks the city and is home to Scotland's crown jewels. When I was there, I didn't go into the castle because I was being too cheap, but one of my favorite <laughs> places was Calton Hill. It offers a beautiful view of yeah. the whole entire city. While we're still in Edinburgh, we're gonna head over to Arthur's Seat. Now, Arthur's Seat is located in Holyrood Park, and it's a short walk from Edinburgh Center. Arthur's Seat is an extinct volcano with an elevation of 823 feet. When I was there, I wanted to get as high as I could so I could see all of Edinburgh. I made a hike up and I reached the top. It was just so windy when I was there, nearly blew me over. After I hiked to the top, I had a good time just hiking around Holy Ride Park and enjoying the views of one of UK's most iconic cities. All right, well, that is it for my United Kingdom top 10. The UK is just such a unique region in the world and I hope all can witness its beauty and history. Okay, so I actually lost track of the 10. Do you know how many of the 10 you've been to? I, I lost track too. Well, because it wasn't numbered. I needed to count down yeah. like 10, 9, eight. Anyway, I think there were only two or three I hadn't been to at all. Yeah. But um, 
I was not expecting this for top 10. I wasn't no. expecting... I was say, expecting something more spe- specific. Yes, you can't say Wales, Northern Ireland. Like, mm. choose specific places yeah. in each of those, you know. So, say Mount Snowdonia or Snowden. Yeah. What is it? Um, so, specific places within it, or at least <clears throat> even regions. Mm-hmm. So... I I loved the video because his photography and drone footage is amazing. Mm. It was fast moving too. I, li- I like that. Yeah, so it was a great video. I just kind of massively disagree with his top ten places. What do you? Well, think? it's kind of a mixture of specific things and general, more broad and general yeah. things. Yeah. So okay. So so what are some of your top ten things that you top ten places in the UK that you would have put in there? Um, I would put York, for example, Mm, mm -hmm. or the Lake District. Mm -hmm. I love, love, love the Lake District if you were going to be broad and say Mm -hmm. broad things. Yeah. Um, The Cotswolds. Yeah. Um, We we obviously love the Cotswolds because I'm doing this whole video series on the Cotswolds, which I hope you check out if you haven't already. mm -hmm. Uh, But yeah, I kind of think like... If you're going to be general, don't do the whole country of Wales. You but do like A O N B. Pembrokeshire Park yes. or something like yeah. that. Yeah, say the Pembrokeshire Coast or the Cotswolds or the Lake District or mm-hmm. the Yorkshire Dales or mm-hmm. something. If you don't want to just choose one place and say, yeah, you know, Harrogate or like mm-hmm. something really, really or Knaresborough, say something specific, then mm-hmm. at least do a little bit of a region, not. An entire country. Like, top 10 places to visit in the UK. England! <laughs> <laughs> so, last question. What places do you want to go to that he mentioned that we haven't been? Well, those, the uh, Jurassic Coast, more of the Jurassic Coast. Yeah, um, I want to see old I want to see white. I want to see White Cliffs. I haven't really seen White Cliffs. Have you seen the White Cliffs of Dover? No. Okay, I've seen those. But I want to go to Old Harry's Rocks. I want to go to Dirtle Door mm-hmm. for sure. So, mm-hmm. um, and then there's places in Cornwall like uh, Tintagel that I, I want to go to. We haven't been to. So, yeah, I think really the, uh, the Jurassic Coast is mm-hmm. the biggest one that mm-hmm. stands out. But mm-hmm. I still have loads of other places that I want to go that he that didn't make his top ten. Yeah. Maybe yeah. he hasn't. I've got a very long <laughs> list, and also based on suggestions that people have made on this channel. Right. It, Subscribers really, have given yeah. us great suggestions. Yeah. Yeah. We, we have 50 places in our top 10 places in the UK. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this discussion about the top 10 places in the UK, according to Ryan Shirley, and our reaction to them. We will see you next Friday. Thanks so much for watching, and do something good in the world today.